as are considered luminaries and large developers. Uh, what do you guys think? Oh, the M word. You guys want to start? Okay, I mean, I, you know, my opinion on it is, I, in terms of action items, just ask the question, should the mantle. media have a response to Mantle? And I think that's unequivocally no. They should, you know, it, it would be, I think, a horrible mistake if some reason, you know, somehow NVIDIA got panicked by this and made some lower level NVIDIA API. You know, you already have very good low level access through the, the GPU extensions that NVIDIA has always rolled out you know, ahead of anywhere else give you as much performance as you want to trade the inconvenience of doing NVIDIA proprietary stuff on them. Now, Mantle is, in the, AMD has talked many times in the past about you know, close to the metal type of architectures, and it only ever became interesting because of their dual console things. If it was just a way to, to do on the PC, be a little bit more, uh, you know, lower level for them, I couldn't have cared less. Uh, the landscape does matter that they have both the major console wins with a similar architecture that you can get on the PC. Developers will be making systems architectural changes that favor those. Um, so I think it, it's not a stupid thing for AMD to be doing it at this point. There are some benefits that they can reap from it. Uh, it could have implications for Steam, Steam box type things there. Um, but I, they're probably, the, if Microsoft and Sony both embraced it, that would be very, very powerful for AMD, but it doesn't look like they're going to use Microsoft for the you know, words that they're mouthing now. Sure. So, um, I mean, if I was still doing all of the, you know, all of the major technology coding for, uh, for next-gen game stuff, I probably would not be embracing Mantle right now. Uh, but it would be, there would be days when it would be extremely tempting. You know? But when I would dispassionately step back and look at it, I probably wouldn't come down on the side of saying it's, it's worth the effort there. But obviously, others come to different conclusions. Sure, uh, there's some good ideas in it. Well, it uh, we really liked the idea of having low level, low overhead access to the GPU. I mean, if you look back at what's in both DirectX and OpenGL, there's a lot of overhead in those APIs and the multiple layers of them, and the fact that they date back to you know the old SGI model of hardware rendering, which is very very different than the modern shader-based programming model that we have now. You know where you have potentially unified memory and a lot of processing power available in the GPU, and lots of ways of sharing data that go beyond just calling a ton of API functions for every little thing you want to do. Uh, so there are good ideas there. I hope that uh, really helps uh, the OpenGL committee and Microsoft shape their future APIs. I mean, if you ask me what I'd much prefer to have a low-level API for accessing the GPU, the answer is yes, but five of them, each for different uh, hardware architectures and vendors and operating systems, absolutely not. That is the wrong direction for the industry to go. Um, and to have yet another API on the PC that's still different than the standard PC DirectX API, and it's different than the OpenGL, the OpenGL ES that exists on Mac and Android and iOS, and it's different than the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4's low-level rendering API, and it's different than what Microsoft provides on Xbox. I, I, I don't think it's a, a good idea. Yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> It, one of the key things about it is, and one of the main reasons for doing it is that it's not a replacement. Uh, there's, it's not designed that way at all. Uh, the, the idea is that we, we can solve some of the long-term problems that we've actually been having on the PC as a platform. All the stuff we've been talking about uh, today of getting on that really robust performance, consoles type of, type of, of, of robust, stable performance. Uh, those are things we can experiment and, and work with, uh, with Mantle. We do that with ECD and we do that with GL also, of course. Uh, this is a, another avenue you can see. Uh, it's also a, a really interesting of just essentially opening up something that we're quite familiar with already. We've been spending, well, essentially the last two years working on the next gen uh, consoles and the architectures are the same. We're intimately familiar with, with, with those architectures and it's a good fit there just as, uh, as John described. And I see, even though we're not done with our work with it and like, it's definitely not, not, uh, not done yet either to be, to be shipped out, uh, I still see it as a, as a success even right now, actually, just because of these conversations and the, the amount of things that actually, the amount of developments and the amount of uh, uh, sort of both enthusiasm and even the opposite of enthusiasm, all, all of the type of, um, uh, 
it's been a bit stale, uh, you could say, in, in, especially in the PC graphics space. Microsoft, they switched focus uh, for, uh, for quite some time over to, to other things, which they probably really did need to do. Uh, but I, I think now, going forward, it's a really exciting opportunity, both on the, on the PC space and the stuff we're experimenting with Mantle and what we're learning on the consoles, but also mobile, as we discussed before, of, of okay, what should be the future graphics pipeline there? There's a lot of movement in all of these things, and it's, it's just good to have lots of different avenues to experiment uh, and, and actually hopefully deliver concrete value uh, in these things. But I completely agree with both John and Tim that if NVIDIA would do their own API and then Intel would do an API and then Qualcomm would do an API, that's not the future we want to be. That, that would be a bad future. Uh, that would be very, a, very, a lot of work for you. Yeah. Microsoft and Kronos uh, does play an important part of all, all of this. And uh, I hope Mental will be quite influential in, 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 in many of these aspects also. And what we're doing right now, also specifically with, with AMD, is, is just a start. Yeah, and you, you've used the API yeah, where we've just uh, read the yeah. spec or the marketing yeah. materials. Um, what would you say is the two questions? What do you think is the cost of, like, in man years or whatever, of uh, implementing metal support and metal field? And what do you think is the ultimate gain on PC? Like, could you try to quantify that? It, it's, it is too early to quantify. We've been very busy just uh, making sure our game works overall and actually sh sh uh, shipping it out. We're almost done with it. Uh, so it's too early to say we'll have a lot more information in November, uh, mid November when we talk more about it, and it will be interesting to see. And I think it's important also to, one, one thing that people, oh, general, people that are not developers, it can be difficult to understand that when it comes to ball nights, it's actually, it's not like the ball. Okay, we solve this one, we're done, go home, and the game runs well. Uh, ball nights is like whack-a-mole. You, you find, fix one, and then you thought that that was the thing, you made that four times faster, and then the next ball next shows up after. Uh, of course, the biggest issue is that really you have to architect your large-scale vision to take maximum advantage of things. Yeah. No API just all of a sudden really makes a dramatic difference no. on things because if you built a good game engine you know, to any API, even if you magically made all that API over and vanish, it doesn't make that much of a difference. It's the possibility of doing I mean, there's stuff on the GCNs that you know, I'm very excited about, some of the asynchronous pipeline queues for different things that would be great to you know, to take direct act, uh, direct control over, but then that's you know you either design for that or you don't design for yeah. that. Yeah, it, it, it will be a gradual approach also. Of, sure, we're doing about before. It's not like about before is is only dedicated for a specific API a specific platform. It's 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 a rich game there. You want to work with something and and deliver concrete benefits and then evaluate and then go forward and, and, and see where we are. And hopefully in the future we'll design games based on many of the concepts that we're proving out a lot earlier now than what we can do otherwise. Uh, and I think that that's actually a good change for the entire industry. Even though people sometimes do get stuck up on, on like the the overall thing, thinking again, oh, the same discussion as I had before of, okay, it's mobile will replace all of PC. No, that's, that will not happen. Same matter. Place all of the X or all of the L that, that they're complementary. Well, actually, when you use Mantle, it's not complementary, but it's complementary <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the actual industry overall. Uh, and you want that competitiveness, uh, not necessarily by having five different APIs, but having movement. Uh, and I think that's really, really interesting. Cool. All right, thanks. I appreciate it a lot. Can you tell us, tell us how much they pay for you to use it? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, yeah. that's, 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 that's no. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, I can answer a couple of questions. Uh, they didn't have to pay us anything to use it. I've been pitching uh, these type of ideas for, for many, many years for every single vendor. Uh, and it's actually talking just about my, my own egoistic view of solving my own specific problems is that we see a lot of stalls, we see a lot of performance, performance gone missing in many areas that we actually want to get at that performance. We want to learn how to program a, a machine on, on, a, on a lower level that, that has a really, really good architecture for, uh, for that. And I think that's something that will we'll sort of roll out going forward also. Okay, so it's good as an R&D platform for developers to experiment with. And John, you were talking about the desire to have front buffer access or something like that. A lower at level API would be more likely to provide that. I think it's also good if it pushes Microsoft and the OpenGL folks to improve their drivers by realizing that, hey, you can actually achieve a lot more performance on PC with some more low-level techniques. Um, I think it would only be bad if the outcome of this is that now we have to deal with five vendor-specific APIs for all that GPUs. Yeah. And also, 
also the division for, for mental, well, it, it can play out many ways. You don't really, you can't really say for, for sure. Uh, uh, but the vision for mental is that it will, it can become a, an open API also. That's something we're completely open for, and that's something AP is open for also. It's just that that's not the right way to go at it initially. There are those avenues already with Kronos and with ECB. This is if us trying something else. If it wasn't an open API, it wouldn't be a low-level API. <laughs> well, well, actually, I, 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 don't, I, yeah, I don't fully agree. Sure, you can make an API that's completely down to the level, sort of what you, yeah. like you know, on the piece uh, we worked, uh, it was a very, very thin abstraction of it. It was completely specific that architecture. I do think the way modern GPUs work is, is quite different from, from how the DX uh, or even absolutely the GL design was from, from the beginning. There are extensions at least in GL land where you can access many things, but there, there are commonalities between all our products, like bindings for example. That's an awesome thing that the, the NVIDIA has been working on with, with, with GL. That is really the future for all GPUs. And if you ask the different vendors, uh, even people, even vendors perhaps on mobile space that do not have it yet, yeah, that is the future. Yeah. Well, now I'm talking for all mobile vendors. Well, yeah, probably but, not. Yeah. But uh, I mean, overall, it's, you know, it makes sense as, sure, as sure. a modern design for that. Uh, uh, and you see some some convergence towards things that are generally good design. And then some people are uh, some designs maybe will come a little bit later for that. Uh, but when it's a great fit for 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 key hardware and it's a great fit for developers, then I think well, that's the way it will go. Like my point about uh, unified memory is absolutely here, and we really need to get get down yeah. to GPUs are just peers on the same memory pool as the CPU and we really need like documented texture layouts. And, and that's another thing that everything is becoming SOCs also. So even the GPU is a combination of tons of different processors. There's a significant amount of processors. Even if it's an Intel GPU or if it's an AMD GPU, there's quite a lot of quite independent engines there. And that's something that's hidden from us now. The GPU is something that you, from the CPU, you prepare your commands, you just give it to them. And it has a driver that tries to figure out which goes where. That's just generally good design to expose those things. Like if you're trying to do something picky, like using the hardware video decompression stuff, or then you know, re-encoding there, you have yep. to bend a brand new API to uh, get that captured. Yeah. Or, or, or even, even, even things like compute, for example. You, you, compute is, well, one of the best use cases of compute is for graphics, which is kind of, uh, yeah, <laughs> it feels a little bit weird. But, but it, it's not like, you want to use it both tightly coupled with your with your graphics, and you want to use it completely separately that the CPU drives for for low latency stuff, and you want to have background tasks that uh, that have uh, well can have really high latency and run in the background and just eat up whatever vector units that are free on your GPU. That's also generally good design for. Oh, even in the system. GPU space, I'm hitting on these issues where I want GPU task scheduling, and we have no yeah. concept of prioritization between GPU SKUs where. You know, we need to be able to specify time slices and priorities yep. and you know, it's down to being a CPU scheduler for a finite resource. And it will like to take quite a lot of time until we find a convergence uh, to a, a, a definite model there. And, but in the meantime, it's good to have a, a couple of models, both from hardware and from software, sort of competing or, or, or being tested there uh, and, and see what sort of what come, comes out of that. Uh, because I do think there will be quite an interesting convergence. There's, there's clearly uh, a large amount of enthusiasm or do you think? Um, yes. Is it thus fair to say that you'll be playing the games that you're developing on NVIDIA hardware from this point on? Wow. <laughs> 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 well, NVIDIA, they have G Sync. They have, well, I have to say, they have good GPUs. They don't, they don't have a map at all. Um, <laughs> it starts getting a little bit tricky. In, in, in my view, yeah, NVIDIA had Mantle and we had G-Sync or we had, ideally all vendors should have all of those. Uh, that would be the best solution, that would be the best solution for the industry. But I think what you're seeing, if you look at it from a practical point of view, you'll have first mover, first mover uh, advantages for the, per for the companies that invest or in the effort and actually bring something out, uh, something out there. Uh, so I'll play the game on both. So is, uh, uh, for is various reasons. <laughs> Is the GC software side of things uh, and hardware side on the, the card, is that going to be licensable to like our Intel and AMD going to be able to? Yeah, we haven't concluded the notion of it. Frankly, you know, we're first trying to get it going. Yeah. yeah. Get the awesome. system going, get the display, I guess, going. We had to change the GPU architecture to get it going, and then we haven't concluded anything in the future. That sounds like a software API yeah, that I've been thinking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if only that pesky GC had anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. And I'm Tim, John. 
Yeah, well, we primarily use a MIDI hardware at a, at a bank, and we, we buy less of it. I'm so surprised. <laughs> I've got a light boost monitor on my desktop, so I mean, you'll probably update to it. Yeah, I heard my voice called out. Uh, we got the, the, the voice of God over here telling us. One more question. <laughs> 